Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, another short C64 video. Um, so what my plans are with this, I got, bought this board ages ago. Uh, now, it's marked as OK, I think there's a thing underneath that says, uh, says there, 100% OK. Is it really 100% OK? I don't know, maybe it was at some point in time. But, you know, you can see here it looks a bit rusty around there. Obviously it's got the SID and the PLA missing, I forget which one's which here, I think that's the PLA, that's the SID on this revision board. It's missing the VIC, it's got the clock chip there. Uh, and we're missing a CAA, uh, and those pins there look bent all over the place, look the short. So yeah, my plans are with this to get some ZIF sockets on it. So you'll have seen a similar thing on Adrian Black's channel, there'll be linked down below, and Jan Beta's channel. Other channels may have done it, I'm not sure, but certainly those two guys. And I've had these uh, sockets for about three years actually sat around here waiting to do this. Uh, and this board has been here for, I don't know, two and a half years, I think, so I just haven't got around to it. But I forget now is the time. Uh, I've got a load of C64 chips that I'd like to go through and test. Uh, I think the other thing I'd like to do on this board is make it a bit more modular than it is. What do I mean by that? Well, we've got uh, 12 volts. Um, I forget which one it is, that one there, I think. 12 volt regulation on here. I'd like to build a switch between 9 and 12 so that we can have the uh, C64C, you know, the HCMOS version of the VIC, and the HCMOS version of the SID. Um, yeah, that would be uh, a nice uh, use for this, I think. I could even do some little mods, have some LEDs uh, with, you know, 9 volts, 12 volts, so I could actually see how it's switched. That would be quite nice as well, I think. And at the same time, clean this up, because look how dirty it is. It's absolutely filthy. You maybe get rid of the rust and stuff around here. I might take that off and fit some replacement uh, unit there to give this video out of it, or something like that, I don't know. But this is just going to be a workhorse test board. So, a ZIF socket, I'll go and get them. Uh, it's a zero insertion force socket. So instead of these ones here where you know, it grips the pins and it's quite hard to push it in and out, we'll remove these sockets, we'll remove each of the chips as we go around and replace them with a ZIF socket and a zero insertion force socket is as it sounds there's zero insertion force required you just lift a lever put your chip in it plops in and you close the lever it grips all the pins at the same time and we'll start by putting some ZIF sockets into these positions here um, then I can get my chips in and we can test it in fact I'll start with a PLA and the VIC, because those are the only two things needed to boot here. It will boot without that CIA. We'll just get a um, blue screen or something like that, or a flashing cursor, I forget which. So those have been socketed before, so you know it has, has had to repair this, hasn't it? But it just looks really dirty, really oxidized. Um, it's not too bad on the underside there. So as I say, this box here has been sat around for blooming ages. So yeah, one of the two of these look like they've been reclaimed. They were bought new, but yeah, there's a bit of polystyrene and bits of fluff. So I've got some all different sizes here, including uh, where I've gone there, ones for the RAM somewhere. I don't know where they are now. I've got a load of small ones for the RAM. They must be in another container or something. Um, but yeah, I've got one for every single IC. Now we might not be able to get them on every single IC because. Well, there are some challenges, so I may need to re relocate some of these components on the underside, but we can do that. Same with the resistor arrays, because as you can see, you know, is that about the same size as that socket there, or that chip rather? It might be one pin to me. No, it's the right size, that. So you can see the problem we'd have here is this cap. So we'll desolder that, solder it on the other side, and then that will fit quite nicely there. And there's sufficient space between these, I think, to literally socket every single one of these up. Let's just, uh, let's just eye that one up. Is that... 40 pin? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, this one. So, again, these are going to have to come off, aren't they? So, we'll remove the socket and then I'll deal with these things and just relocate them before we attempt to fit this on. Pin one is there. So, uh, yeah, it's typical to have pin one uh, near the top here, near the lever, I think, on these. It'll just sit there. It's got fluff all over it, look. So, I need to go find those RAM sockets, actually. That's annoying me. I don't know what I've done with them, but as I say, I've been on this for about three years almost. It's incredible how long it's took to get to do this. Uh, and the other thing I may do here as well, just to expedite the process, you know, speed everything up, is just get the uh, desolder station onto this. Uh, I can't do that right now. My wife's in a conference call. And uh, yeah, I just need to keep the sound down a bit because the sound insulation in this room is, is really bad. I mean, you can tell a lot when it rains, it's like you hear every single raindrop. 
So all the pins apart from there, which I think is ground, are desoldered. So yeah, I use this, it's got a round under smooth underneath this. And then you just avoid scratching the board and just do that. It's the equivalent of under magnification, just you know, flicking the pins one at a time like to see if they're free. But you're freeing them up as long as you can see the solders gone. They will just break off the edge there without damaging as long as you've removed sufficient solder. And then of course you could do the flick test just to make sure, you know, one by one, just to make sure they are actually free. But anyway, that end pin there, I'm just going to get the desolder station on to do that one pin. So another small evolution to the process that may help you out here. Uh, flick the pins, uh, I'm probably going to block it with the camera here. They flick. You like make a springy sort of noise when you do that. So I freed up all that side. This one here. That one's free, 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 stuck. So just heat it at the same time as flicking it. Keep flicking it, there we go, it's free. But obviously only do that when you've removed a lot of the solder. So that one there stuck, so do the same thing, I'll heat it. And then I'll flick it. There's still too much solder there, I think. Right, that one needs more work with the solder pump. But many of these, I have, uh, well, say several, I've been able to free that way. And when you heat it, wobble it like that, you can see it moving. Then you use the desolder pump. There we go. And then just to check it again. Yeah, so it's still stuck a little bit, so again, heat it and flick it. And then just keep flicking it. There you go, it's free. That one's still stuck, so we'll heat the pad. It's free, keep flicking it. That's it. That one's free. Free, 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 stuck. Yeah, so this one's ground. Let's just uh, heat it and hang on. Flick it like that and then keep flicking it as it kills. There you go, it's not joined back up. This one's a bit stiff, so I'll do the same here. There we go, freed up. It's worth doing stuff like this, just to make sure you don't damage the board. That one's stuck as well. You know, I think I'd have pulled it off as it was. I'd have just torn a load of pads up with this one. Free, free. I think. Yeah, it's still something. There we go. There we go. It just like snapped a little bit just as I pulled it gently. That's it. Sock it off. So we've got no through hole plates in. And what I always mean, and what I mean by through hole plating, you'll see like a, a copper coloured circle, you know, band around it. It's like windings almost around the pin. It's as it sounds, through hole, it sits between the pad on each side, it's in the centre of the board and it's like a, you know, a copper copper insert and you'll see it stuck on there if you've pulled it off and obviously the pad will usually come with it as well so the fact that there's no pads missing there and we've got no through hole plating wrapped around any of the pins there, that's a successful removal. Uh, it's a single wipe socket this isn't it, but I will keep it, I'll retension these, clean it all up, retention the pins and it'll live to see another day, just as a, a, you know, a last resort spare really. But anyway, now that's off, we'll remove these components and relocate them one at a time on the other side and then we'll clean up before we fit the socket. So we'll start with this uh, capacitor here I think, let's just uh, see if we can desolder it actually. It'll make it a little bit easier. And we're just going to relocate it on the underside. The other thing that's worth pointing out, the mods I am doing here, you could do them to your C64. You don't necessarily need to uh, ziffify, uh, is that a real thing? I don't know. Um, the whole board. You could just add one or two ziff sockets. Maybe two components that you like to tinker with, maybe the SID or the VIC. If you've got a thing about collecting all the different revisions of SIDs or VICs and you frequently find yourself test needing to test them, it's uh, a good way to do that without risking uh, damaging your uh, board. So I'm just heating it and I'm going to pull it from the other side. Wow, that's absorbing tons of heat. If you're struggling with a point like that, consider heating it with two ions at once. There we go. 
Right, let's just see, has that come off? Oh, I might need to just wobble those pins. It's that one there, I'm not convinced that's free. Can't seem to grip it, where's it gone? I think it's pulled through actually though. really struggled to get that cap off. There you go. It's off. So uh, that's the cap. And as I say, we simply just want to relocate it here. So let's just uh, add a little bit of solder there. Add a little bit of solder there. Uh, you need to think about where you fit it, you know, you wanting to make sure the legs don't short or anything. At this point you may want to shorten the legs, you may even want to put some insulation tape or captain tape underneath it uh, to avoid uh, you know it's shorting at some point but I'm just gonna kind of float it like that let's get that let's get that leg into position there what I'll do and I'm just gonna just uh, push it down like that. So there's no chance of it showing to anything there. What I may do is stick some feet on this later so it stands up. But like that's that cap there relocated now. So that's both of those relocated. This doesn't need moving I don't think. Anyway let's clean up here. Um, another suggestion is if you've got a dishwasher and you know my views have changed on this over the years. If you've got a dishwasher consider putting it in the dishwasher but one thought I did have of the dishwasher is you could contaminate your dishwasher because you're getting lead and I don't know other things and stuff that yeah they technically they should get flushed out shouldn't they but lead's a heavy metal it may sink to the bottom of your dishwasher and there from that point on for every day you could be washing your washing you know your pots and getting lead very small percentage of lead onto everything so uh, yeah but anyway dishwasher is a really good way of really quickly cleaning the board uh, I'm not sure it's uh, healthy to do it though that's the thing um, and as long as you rinse your board off properly with some IPA or some afterwards and make sure it's thoroughly dry there's no reason why you couldn't do that I think it's just the health thing that's my new <laughs> point of view on the doing that you know that's my new point of view on that technique uh, I used to think it was a bad idea for sockets and you know moisture underneath chips and things and I'm sure it probably does uh, you know if you don't get the moisture off quick enough it can start to corrode um, but I think it's more about the health of your family using that dishwasher afterwards that's what I would be a bit concerned about I guess in theory with dishwashers the heavy metals would just go to the bottom of it where it gets uh, flushed out anyway um, but does it do some of them get stuck was that beep then? I'm trying to clean the slightly wider area because obviously the sockets could overlap here quite a lot. Anyway, it doesn't need to be a Picasso this does it? It's just got to be used for testing chips. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that I think. The general area where the socket's going to be is clean enough. So one of the problems you can have here is these pins are a bit thicker than normal so you may have to you know do extra desoldering here with either braid or your desolder station um, the other thing you can do and I'm not sure I've mentioned this before but if you've got something with a really sharp point like a needle I sometimes use this probe here because funnily enough the negative <laughs> is sharper than my positive is just put it in and just do that just press a little bit and any little particles of solder on the edges kind of get squished out to make it more spherical and then you may find your socket goes straight on but obviously this isn't something I do on all repairs or anything it's just rare recursions like this where I've got bigger pins than uh, the board is kind of comfortable with with the bits of solder that are there so for purposes of this here it'll be fine you can damage the through hole you can even pull the through hole out if you uh, you know press too hard there but those are going to be more spherical now so as you can see, that's in position now. Anybody who tells you it's easy to get a ziff socket onto a board like this is lying through their teeth. Seriously, all oh, they've had just like amazing look. Um, I'll show you a few techniques on the next one. What you've got to do, uh, you know, is push uh, a tool in uh, to the each pin hole 
to just uh, press it outwards a little bit. I'll show you that. It's not damaged at all, but a lot of preparation work is required. Uh, you can see the components on the underside here. Could put some captain tape under those. We could even get a piece of heat shrink tubing or something. Uh, I forget who else did one of these. I think it was um, Mind Flare Retro, and I think that's what he did. I think he used little pieces of uh, uh, heat shrink tubing. And shrunk them down so I might do that um, I'll post a link down to his video below and the, the, the other ones are, are mentioned as well I think Adrian did one as I said I think Jan Beta did one so I'll post those below so let's just try and straighten these pins out and then I'm gonna go get a PLA on it and a Vic and we'll just test it to see if this board is doing anything. Yeah, they're not too bad on that orientation. And I need to just uh, straighten them uh, this way if I can. Right, let's go and uh, give that a try. Mm, it's a bit better. So I've got the wrist strap on, I've got PLA in here. We've got uh, our R3 Vic here, so it's just sit it in there and uh, pull the lever. Oh, there we go. So it's in, switch it on, and it works. That's great news. So we've not got a cursor here, that's because that CIA is missing. Let's do the PLA next, let's just pull this out, it pulls out easily. And as I say, I'll take the socket off, and I'll retension both. This is a single wipe socket here with the Vic, actually. The SIDS double wipe, that's single wipe. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's get that off next. And I think actually that was replaced by whoever owned this board previously. So you may or may not need to do this, the, the pins are pretty wide here. So yeah, what I've been doing, I did on the Vic, and I had to do this a number of times. Just push a, a small implement like this and just rotate it a little bit. So I've not pulled the, the through hole out, I've not damaged it or anything like that. I've just literally made it more spherical. Um, obviously, if you use a dissolved station, you might not need to do that. Um, we'll do one or two of these with the dissolved station, but because they are so wide here, they're much wider than a normal pin. So trying to get them to go in is very hard. You can see that's almost you can see that's almost in the right place now. But uh, if you press too hard, these pins split. I'll show you. I've got one of these where that happened. I've fixed it, but nevertheless, that is something that's probably you can see it's just not going to go on. Even that side, even that side there, it feels like it doesn't want to go on. So this is why. I am having to do uh, this, like I say, we'll, we'll just do this side because this side's even even worse. Just push and rotate. All you're doing is making it a little bit wider. There's probably some solder still there on the edges and things. It's kind of a one-way process, I would suggest, because my reasoning there is these are so wide. You know, the, the Vic, the Vic over there, it was really hard to get that to go through uh, and I think when you try and desolder it and pull it off you remove all the through hole with it but you can see there's no damage there but you can see there's no damage there it's just if you put it up to the light you can see right through and the holes are really wide just looking through the light I think that third one there is still just a little bit wide let's try that see if that's any better yeah sort of going on there I think the left side not so much Incidentally, I just tested it with this uh, CIA fitted, and it does work. Now this pin down here is not very well freed, so oh, there we go, it's come off. I think. Yeah, there we go. No pads or through holes, so another successful removal. So the next problem we have here is relocate that cap, but this chip here, the fact it's socketed, is a problem. Hmm. So I'm going to need to remove the socket, I think, fit that back on the board, and then, I, th I can't remember who did it, it might have been Jan Beter, it could have been Mindflare Retro, shaved a bit out of here, I think, or maybe they didn't, I don't know, let's just try and position that roughly, 
yeah, positioned roughly there, you can see it's overhanging here. So I am going to need to do something. So let's get that socket off next, I think. So I just checked it was Minor Flare Retro that did the shaving down. Uh, and you can see I shaved down just the same way. I don't know if he did it on this chip. It might be, you know, on this socket. He might have chosen a different socket. He might use the one here because that would have made more sense. There's less to clash here, look. But I'm only going to socket up one of these because another socket will not fit next to this. And that's going to cause me some interesting problems here. And I noticed, again, mindful of the retro, the link will be down below. He had a similar problem. Well, the same problem, exactly. So I'm not sure whether he did these two ROMs and left the kernel, or whether he did the kernel and left these two ROMs uh, as turn pin or whatever. The ones I can't socket with these ZIF sockets, I will put turn pin below. <laughs> I'm not even sure I can put a turn pin socket there next to that. Um, anyway, I'll give it a go. So you can see I had to set the screw out here because the part shaved down, obviously the screw was too long, I just chopped the tip off that screw. So I can get that screw back in. Now it isn't soldered on this socket just now, hang on. Let's just put it side on. Yeah, it can do with a bit more trimming off that actually because I think that's still just a wee bit too long. Let's, let's just have a little bit, um, a little bit of length like that. So I'll put my fingers over there to stop that bit flying off. Watch it up cut my fingers there we go so yeah the screw is a lot shorter now so of course it's not got a point on the end but it doesn't need it it just needs to be long enough to go through there and into the piece below and that now is there we go so yeah I can solder that on so so let's now try that with the CIA socketed obviously we need to get the uh, PLA in there so PLA in position. Now one thought I did have, when I come to fit the SID socket here, this bar now is in the way. I'm going to need to cut that bar down on it and move that plastic notch down. So yeah, that's uh, something else to deal with. I understand the title of my Flare Retro's video now, which was uh, Zero Insertion Farce. <laughs> I, I get it, I totally get it, I can relate. So uh, let's just uh, sit that there, power it on, I think, is that the right way up? Yeah. And it's working, that's good news. So you can see what I mean now, the cursor's flashing, now that CIA is there, so. Uh, I think I may just get a SID into this and just test this board with uh, the SID. So let's switch it off, uh, see if I've got a, an equivalent, yeah I have. So I've got one of these, let's get the uh, arm SID in there, I think. Bear in mind I'm going to be taking this out, it's a single wipe socket anyway, I'm going to be taking that out and uh, ziffing it. So that's the SID in. Let's get the Kung Fu flash cartridge in there. God, that felt a bit crusty. I think that socket's going to need a clean or even replace. So let's uh, switch that on. I'm pleased so far though, we've got three things ziffed. Sweet. That's up to jump, isn't it? And a little bit of Kung Fu Master on the Kung Fu flash. <laughs> Oh, hang on, I've got just in the wrong port of her. Is it? Press a key, F1. Yeah, one player. Start game. Yeah, there we go. It's not a bad version on the C64. The key here is to keep moving. It's surprising how few enemies are spawning behind me and stuff. So after testing all three of those 6569R1s, the thing I do know is that obviously they get very hot. Um, and it's because obviously this was designed to be heat sunk with the shield. Um, now, one advantage maybe with these uh, nice ceramic R1s is the die is kind of coupled to this heat pad here, you know. So I think actually I'm going to get a, a little heat sink which will fit perfectly in the middle there. So yeah, let's do that. So a huge jump cut. I've done uh, quite a lot here. We've got uh, one ZIF socket here for each of these RAM chips here. Now I could in theory get four more of these and fit them here. There is enough space to do that. But I figured four's enough. It just allows me to test four chips at a time that way. Um, 
but I could could go further. You can see here I had to shave uh, underneath that socket. I'm not sure if I showed that. So yeah, it does mean that if you had to replace that chip and obviously sold it straight on because originally it was socketed, you may remember. Um, if I had to replace that, it could be a bit of a pain actually. Um, I mean, in theory, I could just trim, you know, the two legs there desolder the rest and then it would be able to be pulled off there and replaced it would be a bit hard to do though I might have to remove that socket if I ever needed to replace that so and I've just pulled the green notch off the end of there I was experimenting with trying to bend it but you know what that is so hard to bend without damaging the socket um, I wanted to bend it sideways so that when it's up here you see we can have a socket here now yeah and it's going to be interfere with that isn't it so i might need to do a few things i might need to either trim the end of this off and then stick the green thing further back down the green notch further down here or the socket that we fit here cut a tiny little slice there for that to slide into so i don't know i'm not really sure what to do with that of course if i had fitted this the other way around so its bar was down here it wouldn't be an issue but what i've tried to do is maintain pin one being uh, the top where the the thing is just for consistency so those are things to consider if you were going to do something like this to a board so i'm going to do the sid next i'm going to see the desolder station up now i'm going to use the desolder station on that one uh, so i'm going to need to re relocate that cap that cap that cap and that cap i think on the underside so i kid you not i just spent two hours trying to unblock this blooming thing there'll be a separate video on that and it won't be a two hour long video so yeah you can see because I've got quite a large tip some of the shoulder masks are going to get removed there as I said this board though I'm not too worried about getting this 100% perfect because it's just a test board that's all it's ever going to be used for right we're all soldered there so Let's just uh, have a hobble here. They should all be free, I think. Let's just see. That's loose. Yeah, it's fairly loose. Let's just uh, try, try and get under it. You can see a pin's just come out there. It's one of these sockets where the pins come out from the underside, which is nice because you've got less risk of damaging the board. You can see the pins come out, look. So let's just uh, grab them and just gently wiggle. No, those aren't free. I'm going to throw that socket in the bin anyway. It's uh, It's got some weird red marks on the underside of it there. But it's also a single wipe socket. So I relocated uh, that cap, that cap, uh, that cap, uh, and that cap thing. So five, uh, four caps there, I think. So I'll just have a clean around here and then I'll show you what I've had to do with every one of these uh, pads actually now if you don't have to do this well you're super lucky maybe it's just the ziff sockets i've got but uh, this uh, yeah is required for, well certainly for me right let's just uh, unblock that one because there's a little bit of solder hanging over the edge of there let's just get rid of that so yeah make sure you've got uh, them all unblocked and they are all unblocked and then i am pressing this tool here and just a, a twist or two and twist as you release just so you don't damage it pull the through hole out but if you don't do this the large pins on these ziv sockets you won't be able to get them to go in that's without a doubt it doesn't matter how you desolder because i use the desolder station to do this and it still won't go in not without a lot of force so all you're doing here is probably replicating the force that you would apply if you tried to just ram the socket in when it's uh, not going in um, now this is what makes this a one-way mod in my mind not just this process but these because the pins are so blooming wide here I would suggest that when someone tries to remove these from a board like this they will lose lots of pads and lots of through hole because they're so really tight I can't emphasize enough how tight those pins are on these standard size holes on these boards this is why I'm having to do this it isn't just about the solder on the edges it's about just widening it just a tiny tiny bit as carefully as you can just to get them on but I certainly will never be taking these sockets off this it's uh, forever from this day onwards going to be a test board I mean technically you could fit it into um, 
a case and there wouldn't be any issues so you know what it could still be a use, usable system with these on this way I think so yeah and then hold it up to the light to make sure you can see through all the holes there and then all being well if I just get this in the right place unless I'm going to get restricted by this one I'm going to do move that next it should sort of go into the hole I may need to remove that cap but just give me a sec so if at first it's not going on, uh, and in my case the right side wasn't going in, I've just done the same thing there with that little uh, dowel, I think it's called, my little tool. Uh, and then, yeah, make sure the pins are obviously straight on the socket. I still can't get it to go in. What is it on this right side here? There is a bit of solder there actually. Let's just uh, try and remove that. It's not a lot, there's just like a little bit of it here, so I'm just gonna heat that. There we go. Remove that, and then on that one pin, just do that again. Right, let's give that a try. Where's the socket now? I've lost it, oh, it's over here. Um, yeah, I'll try and get the right side before the left side. It's really not easy. It's really not easy because you've got limited visibility. You see, that side there is going straight in. This side ain't. And I don't know whether it's too far to the right or too far to the left. Let's see if we can get the right-hand side in first. What is going on? It's not that cap. The cap is not the issue. Yeah, the pins are straight, so it's a bit of a mystery this. I need to sort of just have a bit of a slide around here until it finds its place. Ah, there we go. Right, so uh, you'll see when you get it when you get it perfectly aligned like that, it's sunk in a little bit, and then you've got to press it quite hard. Oh yeah, it's sent straight in. Yeah, that was because of the work with the dowel. Because of the work with the dowel. It's, it's gone straight in, it's flat and flush, uh, and obviously we've got some caps relocated here, you could get some heat shrink around those, but I'm going to put some feet on this board to stand it off the floor anyway. And you can see the approach on with here, I bent this lever out, look, so will it go down? Yes it will. Yeah, so I just bent it sideways, outwards. Um, so we can just solder that on, and then finally we've got the CPU, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to go with these two, or just the kernel. I think what I might do is put a, a turn pin socket here and then the two ZIF sockets here because I've got more of these chips to test. I've got some kernels but having a socket there for the kernel would be advantageous but what you can't fit is three of these. Now I did originally get, as you can see here, one of for each yeah but you can't accommodate them. You could fit one there, this one then ain't going to fit I think and you could fit one there. I could be wrong, but yeah, I think so. Because if you look at the gap between, if you look at the gap between the RAM chips, the space is a bit bigger. All right, the sockets; these are a bit bigger as well. So, um, yeah, I don't think you could fit three there. If you put all three of these in line uh, and look at where the pins are, centres of them, yeah, you can't fit three. So I'm going to have one of these spare for something else, and I think I'll do those two. A lot of caps need re relocating again here on that resistor, probably. Um, and then I think we'll be able to squeeze this in here maybe next to this let's just uh, size this up yeah I think that'll fit so we should be able to do something like that with a turn pin in the middle of there for that hopefully I'll be able to do that I'm very pleased with how well this has gone. Obviously, inspect with magnification before you solder a single pin on these because the very first one of these I put on uh, before I soldered it and looked at the the pins there I noticed one of them had not come through it folded up on the other side So I'd take it off straighten the pin out widen the hole a little bit that with that dowel and then refit it and it was all right then But thankfully I've not soldered it on at that point had I soldered it on I could have then damaged the board because I do think these are so tight It will just pull the the through hole plating out when you're trying to solder one of these you could be really lucky if you use the dowel like I did and they're not super, super, super tight, maybe it will uh, just come off without any damage. Uh, to be fair, uh, most of them, I haven't had to push very hard to get them to fit, but one or two of them I have. 
despite the holes being really wide, really unblocked, pins being straight, you're like, you know, the socket goes, oh, I'm not going on, I'm not going on. These holes are too tight for me. Um, so you, that, that process, that issue, is obviously going to be a problem in reverse, getting them off. I'm going to be careful here, there's a, a, a trace there that's lost its solder mask, so I'm just going to inspect with the magnifier in a sec, make sure I haven't bridged any of these pins to it. Uh, I've kind of got at this a little bit quicker, a lot quicker actually, than I would do if I was repairing this. This is a junk board that we bought, where we're just, uh, you know, converting it for testing purposes. And as you can hear, it's working so far. So that's using the back SID this at the moment. There will be a separate video on that. My first impressions though are better than the Nano Swin SID, I think. Not as good as the Ultimate, maybe. So well, maybe it's very close to the Swin Ultimate. There's very little difference between the two. Not as good as the FPJ SID, uh, and perhaps equal almost to the ARM SID. But definitely better than the Nano Swin SID. And certainly better than a dead SID, that's for sure. Anyway, I'll report back in a minute. Nearly that. It's just this bottom corner pin here, which I think maybe uh, ground or VCC was hanging on. So, yeah, I don't know, is this going to come straight off or are we going to lose a pad? We haven't lost a pad yet and I haven't damaged a trace yet really other than just a bit of solder mask on one or two of the uh, connections that are right next to uh, things. Let's just see if we can uh, get in at an angle here. Got to be careful, you don't want to crack any nearby caps and resistors, you can see it's lifting there, look. And of course as time goes on you get more and more <laughs> these sockets on the board, it gets harder and harder to get the other chips off. Uh, let's just try lift there, there we go. And let's just try lift there. I would, certainly wouldn't do this if you've manually desoldered it, because I've used the desolder station there and I can see the points are very clear, there it's coming off. And it's coming off there, look. Yeah, I'm um, yeah, confident enough, look, that I think I can get it off. There we go, no damage. So, we'll have a clean under there. We're going to need to relocate that. We may need to relocate that resistor as well on the underside. So, resistors relocated on the underside. That cap, I did relocate that, but then had to remove it for the resistor. Um, once I've got the ZIF socket on there, I will then stick that cap back on the underside because I want to face it this way, uh, you'll see what I mean. Because that resistor's there, if you laid it down on the board that way, it's where the resistor is. So yeah, that's why I should take it back off. So we'll just have a clean here, and then we'll widen the holes. Uh, and then hold it up to the light, just make sure you've got nice, very cool, large enough holes for the pins. And you can see what I mean, just holding up to the light, we can see through all of the holes. I'm going to get that off before I commit to soldering this, I think. I'll just make it a bit easier. Yeah, this is the difficulty. <laughs> it's so hard to see where the pins are. Now annoyingly I don't have any turn pin sockets uh, that size but I've got a dip so I think I'm going to fit a dip there actually. Uh, the legs on this are long as you can see. One of the consequences obviously of using uh, chips with short legs it's not going to grip in there but um, yeah I think I'm happy with that because your turn pin is a nightmare isn't it and we've got two zip sockets here it could be really really problematic trying to get a chip in to a turn pin socket so yeah that might not last as long but I don't expect to be testing huge amounts of kernels on this at all. Uh, let's just remove that uh, chunk of solder there out of the way because there's a bit of solder there that didn't get freed up 
still a little bit. Let's just heat that. And this is what you've got to watch out for, getting solder particles all over the place. Uh, I'm just going to... Right, anyway, let's just uh, try and size this up now, see if this will float first. It's really hard to get these on. I can't emphasise how hard this is, actually. Yeah, this is one of the most difficult things I've done, if I'm honest. Because things just don't feel like they want to line up. The holes are a problem. These pins here just get slightly bent to one side or the other. And sometimes you do get one pin that's like that. And you just can't get it on there. And obviously visibility, there we go, is non-existent. This side's on, the right side ain't. This is a living problem. What's wrong with the right side? Why is that not going in? Yeah, one or two of these are just a bit bent. That might be the issue here. I don't get why the left side goes in, the right side doesn't. You see, this is the point where, when I get that, I'll just revisit the side that ain't going in. And obviously inspect, because if you were to damage a trace or a via or pull a through hole out, you know, you're going to have a huge problem. Getting the socket off will just do more damage. Yeah, there's no damage around that at all. The holes are just now nice and wide, uh, I think. It's the same thing again, like the left side's in, the right side ain't. Why is the right side not going in? <sighs> right, let's start with the right side if we can. Is it these caps here, is it? Is that the issue? Yeah, I think it might be these caps. Let's just uh, move them out of the way a little bit. S something. Something here is stopping us. Now the right side's in, the left side isn't. What? What is going on? Oh God. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be lucky if I can get a socket in that gap there. So yeah, a lot of messing around and it's, it's on, I think. So it's just uh, feel there, yeah, all the pins are through. Uh, so before I commit to soldering that, let's just see if we can get this socket in the middle. And the answer is yes, that's going to be really tight. So again, before I fit that socket, I'll remove this, but we can now solder this on. It's taking quite a lot of time to do this. You may think this is a nice quick process. And uh, just replacing uh, with normal sockets, it would be. These take ages. I've spent literally 25 minutes messing around with the socket to try and get it to go on. And it's all about, you know, the holes being as wide as possible and uh, making sure you've not got any bumpy solder on the top because that can restrict when you're moving the socket around if it's just a little bit uneven, the solder. So I've got that dip socket just anchored in there with two uh, solder points, just to hold it in place. Because what I'd hate to do is fit this zip socket and then find I can't get the dip socket in. You know, in the gap, it's like a fraction of a millimetre out or something. Now we've got a pin here, look, I've not soldered. I left that for the Heiko, the solder station, despite it being rated at something like 70 watts, it isn't. It's got a bigger tip on the desolder station, uh, which should transfer the heat better. And yet, that will really struggle to dissolve something like this, whereas the Heiko sets at around 450 for a number of seconds here. Yeah, you can almost get it off, it needs a bit longer. Now, there is a chance some of these ROMs may die as a result of removal here, you know, from the heat. That is not unblocking, is it? 
There we go, it's pretty unblocked that now. Let's uh, try and get a little bit of leverage here, paying attention to caps and things nearby. There we go, it's coming up. And a little lever over here, there we go, it's just lifting straight off. Look, that's what we want. And here, there we go. So that's that off. So again, we'll clean up around here. Um, we're nearly there now, so I think before I solder this on, I'll stick it in, but before I solder it in, I will remove this next, and then I think we're done in terms of the ZIF sockets. And the big one now, so I had soldered really easily. I did use the uh, A coach free one or two pins up. Yeah, that's off. No damage. Fantastic. Nice long pins on that as well. So, I need to relocate these. Need to move that, move that, I think. And then we can get the final two sockets and then solder the remaining pins here. Woohoo! That was a mare, an absolute nightmare. 20 minutes of micro adjusting it to get it to go on. So, yeah, it looks a mess on the underside. Tons and tons of flux, all these things are relocated here. Just get a little bit in one corner and then the other. I had to bend one or two things out of position while I resoldered things here as well. Like this cap has gone right over back on itself. It's almost shorting over here. So, yeah, I'll straighten that in a minute. Uh, anyway, we can now solder it on. So near completion. So, will it work? Let's get the uh, power in here. We've got video. Just feeling the top of that CPU. Hey, it works. Fantastic. That is, uh, well, for me, I feel like that's incredible. Just because I did so much work there. Sockets of the ball, three of those ROMs and the CPU. And uh, got those awful uh, wide pins through the uh, board there. And everything's fine. So, now uh, an absolute ton of cleaning with cotton buds and the toothbrush. So, I won't bore you with all of this. I'll uh, speed run through some of this, show you just a few bits, and then show you the result. Right, so that's that bit uh, cleaned up. Obviously we've got to do the RAM and the uh, PLA and the VIC. You can see the flux that's just come off there. Final bit of cleaning up here. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got a paper towel underneath this. Um, technically a little bit too close to the carpet here. So just cleaning around this, there are some smears like this here that just won't come off. It's, uh, it's hard to believe. Uh, lots of like really deep scratches and things. You know, there's one that comes like right across here and goes right down here, and it's like uh, affecting the uh, solder mask. I can try a bit of acetone on it later, but obviously stay away from sockets with acetone. But the state of this board, uh, you know, before it got to me, obviously, you know, it's a bit corroded. There's some corrosion on some of these wires here, so just a little bit. It's like the solder's gone really weird. It's important to uh, deal with any sort of corrosion like that, though. Even though it's really light, there's a bit there, look. It's actually affected the solder mask. And of course, when you're trying to clean that sort of thing up, vinegar might be a better idea. And then clean with IPA. Anyway, those wires look a lot better now. You can see there, though, that smear there. It doesn't come off, it's a scratch. So just so you can see how I did that, and uh, obviously I inspected thoroughly on both sides of the PCB here. On a PCB that's got multi-layers, obviously you wouldn't want to do this. <laughs> on these two layer boards you can get away with it, provided you know where your exit point is on the other side. Now around here is okay because there's lots of ground on both sides, but there are some traces so you can't just do it blindly. You can't just guess, you've got to spend a little bit of time measuring up on each side you can see I've got this in place here like this just because it made it really easy to get it absolutely spot on because trying to get a red pen or something in there was proving very difficult but yeah this should be should be spot on I think if I can just get this uh, final hole okay. 
and then I'm widening it slightly by going sideways like that just a little bit be careful not to break the bit you know just twist as you go at an angle and if you do the same thing both sides well you might not need to do this I've got a drill bit that's marginally smaller than the screw so I think one of the final things we're going to do to this board, I'll show you the state of it in a minute. You can see this came from uh, CBM Retro. There's the URL, cbmretro.fi. It's uh, Finland, Finnish company. Um, you can see here, C64 Video Enhancer, analog only. GitHub.com forward slash Copper Dragon. Um, yeah, really nice little uh, video amplifier board here. Uh, using some uh, really nice SMD components, it's really well assembled that. And I've got this uh, pin header here that needs to be cut into a few pieces. And if you look at this silk screen there, it says uh, short board is the top set of pads, long board is the bottom set of pads. So obviously it's going into a long board. This is one of the bread bin boards, and that's just going to replace this because you can see it's pretty rusty, it's pretty corroded. I figure let's get it off, let's clean the PCB up underneath it, fit that on there. Um, if it's any good, I might fit one into my main C64. Uh, you can see a little modification here, and they've got a third display. So these two are for the VIC, we've got the 12 and the 5, and then that one's the main 5 volts for the board. So, yeah, it's uh, it's come a long way, this board, hasn't it? It's a bit of a Frankenstein. So, uh, without further ado, let's get the soldering iron temperature pretty high here. Not necessarily for the small points here, but for the, the anchor points, the grounds and things that hold it on. It's going to be uh, quite hard to get off that, I think. I've got the iron set uh, quite a lot higher here. Is that another anchor point underneath it? I think it is. I think that's like a ground, isn't it? It's got to be, because it's underneath. Hang on. Yeah, the much lighter here. Maybe it's not. Maybe that just sits below it. No, I think it is. I think that's one of the anchor points there, isn't it? So yeah, it's like, you can see that's not melting very well, so higher heat, larger tip, larger than this that is, and leave it for a time, like that. That got rid of most of it there, actually, in that one hit. Just give it another go. Again, just leave it time to sink into the board. Uh, not really the board so much, but the can. There we go. Now you'll know if you've been watching my channel over the years, um, there was a board we came to look at where someone had wrenched the modulator off. Um, so yeah, the patience and having the right tools is essential here. Or you could do quite a lot of damage to this area. So what have we got left now? Uh, just this down here, this is a twist, you can see it's corroded. So let's just uh, twist it, like that. I'm not bothered if these break off, these uh, twists, to be fair. I'm just being gentle as a twister. So that's that one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, there's one there. There's two right next to each other there, look. Yeah, that needs straightening right out like that. That one's done, that one's done, that one's done, those are done. So let's just try and free these ones up just to make sure they're snapped off because they may not be. Yeah, there we go, they're pretty free. Let's try these ones. Hmm. I'm not sure about those. Yeah, this is the bit I was worrying about, to be honest, because, oh, there we go. Sometimes it can be hard getting things like this off. There we go. Oof, it's a good job I took that off. Look at the rust under there. Jeez. So, I'm not sure. I think we lost a pad or two there, actually. The thing that makes me laugh about this is this board was sold as a, you know, fully working board. Like, fit to, you know, put in your C64 to replace a faulty board with... Would you want to stick that in there? Good God. I don't think I would. So, we use a bit of vinegar here now, actually, I think, at this stage. Not because it's corrosive. Uh, well, the board's not corrosive. What I mean is, the vinegar is corrosive. It's an acid. And it just helps cleaning up with things like this, really and just wipe it with IPA afterwards, but we've still got some mucky marks there, look. And we've still got some corrosion there, so let's give that another go. 
kind of vetted the solder mask there as well, look. It comes off really easily with a bit of vinegar. So we'll just uh, clean some uh, IPA now. As I said, all these little marks and streaks and stuff, they're not going to come off, but I think you'll agree that's an awful lot better. So we've got four pins there, we need another four here, and that leaves us with two pins, there might be one extra. Yeah, so we've got four and four, uh, and then there is one pin over there for ground, I'm not sure if that ground will correspond with anything on the board, let's soon find out. <coughs> Right, and I'm changing my approach there because uh, the solder points are good on the other side and there are no traces on this side. I don't know if you can see that. It's just the pad, so even though I lost that pad there, it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm putting them alongside through because I can cut them off then. And then I've got the single pin here, look, alongside through. Yeah, and we can now position this. It's the bottom for the long board, and that's what this is, even though it's wide rather than long. It's, it's a, a bread bin model. Try and line all these holes now. It's just that ground over there that's plain hard ball at the moment. Where is it? Ugh. Let's try and do the ground first. There we go, ground first. And try and get these. There we go. So, what I can do now is just sort of hold it nice and straight. Yeah, solder these pins to anchor it. In fact, let's just do that. I'll do it while you watch. So, we'll start with the ground, I think. And then what we'll do is I'll hold it, press down, so it's flat and flush. Try and keep it square, because it'll bug you if it's like slightly at an angle or something. This, I'm sure. It'll bug, it'll bug me, that's for sure. So, I'll do this one down here. Again, let's just uh, try and... Oop, like I said, this is the problem. There we go. Try and, try and hold it down and flat. Eat that. Just inspect really, just to make sure everything looks straight, and I think it does. Let's uh, let's do this one down here. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. I think. I think at this stage I might flip it over, solder the points on the other side, um, make sure it's straight, and then just commit to doing the rest. So that's all the ones on the underside done. And I think I've got that as straight and as square and as level as I can have it. So yeah, just check this long board. Yep, yeah, that's the bottom ones. And we just have some solder here. Now. It's been pretty pain painless adding this. Hopefully it'll work. I can see what's coming next. I'll have no video. Now there is a jumper on here. I don't know if you spotted it. I don't know where it's gone now. It's there. So maybe we might need to bridge that or something. It's got a 3.3 volt regulator there as well, isn't it? That must be a 3.3 volt device. Unless it's a transistor. It could be a transistor. Uh, anyway, that's all eight of the main contacts soldered and the ground. So let's uh, just trim these down. Uh, don't just trim like that and expect it to not blind you because that's what will happen. You're better off putting your fingers over it. And it's better to know where it went rather than wonder where it went. You know, e.g. pets can eat these things, or, I don't know, it could land in something, somewhere. Maybe someone else's eye, if not your own. So yeah, we'll trim those down. And the ground, wherever that was, here. Right, connected it all up, uh, let's switch it on. Voltages are looking alright. Woohoo, that works! The one thing I would say, <laughs> this is really interesting, this is supposed to improve the video, but actually I see jail bars here where I had none before, so I might need to do the uh, jail bar mod to this, there's a little PCB I've got, I might be able to try it on here to see if that improves it further, but yeah, whilst that looks really crisp and really clear, I do now see jail bars which I've never had before. So, wrist strap on, I'm just going to switch it off, let's get the Kung Fu flash in. Let's see what it looks like with some games. What is going on with that? Where are we going? There we go. Switch it on. So this is a game you may not have seen. It's a homebrew game. It's really cool. Look at the size of the graphics. It's a sprite. It's huge. 
And he's not obviously not a sprite. This is done in uh, Petsky, isn't it? You know, it's like the Commodore ASCII. It's the symbols they use to do various things. You've got blocks and various of the uh, geometry there, I guess. I really like this though. <laughs> it's different. Oh, got to be careful not to try and jump near the doors so you go out the doors. It's quite cool though. I like those zombies the way they run at you. I think that's some ammo or some up there, is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's just try some of the games. So the menu looks pretty clear there. Maybe clearer than it was, actually. Let's try Bagman. That's uh, another game you may not have seen. I think this was a bit homebrew by somebody recently. Yeah, that looks pretty clear to me as well. You do get, when you've got like white coloured text like that, you get like some red and green sort ofness to it. That's a consequence of the chroma, I guess, when you've got constant signal there. Or your chroma affecting the luma and vice versa. That looks good. So yeah, this was an arcade game, wasn't it? And as I say, someone's done a fairly recent port of this. Might be a few years old now. Gotta try and avoid those guards. And you've gotta wait for the lift and take them up to the wheelbarrow at the top, I think. If we wait there. Yeah, you run really slow when you've got the bag. Now, I don't know what you're like when it comes to instructions, but I never read the instructions, and I should have done, really. Uh, if I just had a little bit of an inspection on that jumper there, it says closed, 12 volt Vic, open, 9 volt Vic. So I haven't damaged anything here. It's just, I think it's just changing one, one part of the circuitry here. It's using a different cap or a different resistor or something somewhere there. Um, so, because we've got it, because um, uh, we've got a 12 volts Vic. I think that's what it says. It's 12 volt Vic, 9 volt Vic, and if you've got a 12 volt one, you need that pad closed. So let's just put a large blob of solder. There we go. Cross those two, and we'll give that another try. Just see if it's improved at uh, all. So. And then the final thing is just to clean the flux off uh, both sides. I think the next thing I'm going to do is take this shell off because can you see under here? There's a little bit of rust. A little bit of rust. A little bit of rust down there as well. So let's uh, just take the cards out. Now we soldered one of those points there earlier, didn't we? So it's just this one over here and then strain that out. And uh, that metal shield should come off and we can just clean it a little bit with a wire brush and a fiberglass pen. So I've cranked the temperature up again here. Uh, I'm at 480. Yeah, you can see that's like sticking there. This could be harder to remove than the uh, modulator. Mind you, we did that side alright, didn't we? So, yeah, there we go. It's come off pretty easy, actually. I didn't think it was going to be that easy. Strain that one. Again, cutters are not the best thing to use, but I'm just twisting gently. There we go. Strained out. Now, I'm not sure all the solder has come off those. No, it hasn't. Yeah, I think they made this side to join back on again. There you go, it's come out. Let's now try uh, this side again. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, you can see what I mean. It's not too bad. Just a little bit of rust in there that needs cleaning off. And, of course, it gives us an opportunity to clean up here as well, again, with the fiberglass uh, brush, the wire brush and some vinegar. And you can see most of that's come off with uh, the wire brush and uh, now a bit of vinegar. There's some greenness here. Can you see this? These pins here look a little bit green. I'm just going to use the I'm just going to use the wire brush on these actually. Just gently there at the top, and then we'll get the vinegar onto it as well. Let's try with the fiberglass pen. It might be a little less abrasive and a bit more cleany. Obviously we can't get to the inside row, but I can with the toothbrush and some vinegar. The IPA will displace 
any vinegar that's still there. You could just blow it down with some hot air. But just tilting the board like this at an angle and having a bit of brush will generally do the job. So the final thing here is just to clean this with the wire brush to get the flaky stuff off. Right, there we go. Wiped over with a bit of uh, vinegar as well. So yeah, I mean the top's a little bit dull and stuff, but all of the uh, ready orangey bits I think have gone. So you could use like, I don't know, a light machine oil or something. I just always usually get some WD-40 uh, like this and just rub over it with that. And most of the time you'll tend to find that works all right. It will actually clean it as well. You'll get some of the orangeness off doing that. So of course the uh, final thing now is to get this back on. I think it went that way up actually because you've got the little round holes there and then the uh, the wider ones there for the uh, standoff bits that twist, you know, you, they're all standoffs but the bits you twist, so yeah, not the easiest thing to get back on if I'm honest that side there's not going in, it could be, oh it's solder it's just a bit of solder on it I think, is that one going in? yeah that one's going in as well look so those are sort of snapped into position, you can see that's okay so I think before I do the twists I will solder these two back on Yep, yeah, and I just inspected that from the other side, it's uh, it's okay. So we can now uh, simply just twist these outwards, I think, like that. That one's hooked on there. Uh, we'll do this one the other way. A bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's not coming off, is it? Yeah, you won't get them any more cleaner because you can see it ripples up here. That's just a consequence of the, the way these were manufactured. You know, they put like in a, I don't know, a solder wave. And uh, yeah, you get uh, ripples there as it kills, I think. Solder. And then they put this green conformal coat and whatever it is, you know, the solder mask on afterwards, it seemed, when they made these. And the good news is everything is still working. Yeah, it does look a bit of a mess up here, you know. You can't really do anything with this. You know, some of these with the fiberglass pen marks and things and some scratches. But uh, yeah, the main thing is it's working, as you can see there. But there is one more thing I want to do. And that's improve this voltage here. You see 4.7, 4.8, flicking up and down a little bit. We've got a nice healthy uh, just over five on the Vic. Um, uh, we've got a nice 12.2 on the Vic there as well. Um, I did relocate that heat sink. If you were looking earlier, you might have noticed it was on the, you know, there's like a gold uh, top to this process, uh, the Vic chip here rather. Um, and this heat sink was just on the edge of that right side there, so it was like up at an angle. Like that wasn't really mated very well, uh, you know, thermally to a flat surface. Anyway. Uh, wrist strap, uh, by the way, while I've been touching this. So I think we'll get some contact cleaner into here. So let's switch it off. So often I'll just use uh, Deoxit for something like this. It's good with gold-plated contacts. I'm not sure these are gold-plated. They probably were originally. But all I'm going to do is uh, mask off with this. Uh, and I've got some uh, WD-40 uh, contact cleaner here. It's not the normal WD-40. So it's not got like the, the normal solvent that is associated with WD-40. So for plastics and things like this, it's fine. It is designed for doing nothing but cleaning contacts. So let's uh, just give that spray there, hang on. It's weird how it comes out, this uh, spray. Uh, now with this here, probably going to have to spray some around the neck here, there we go. Uh, and, and do a little bit of off on like that. Might need to give that a few blasts. You could argue you should run this in two phases really, do the din first, see what difference that makes, and then do the switch. Uh, but these both contribute to some voltage drop there. So let's see what the voltages are now. Uh, hang on, let me get the power supply back in. 4.8, 4.9 look. It's gone up a little bit, there we go. So that has made a difference. And obviously as well as switching it off and on, this advantage when you've cleaned it to doing a little bit of that. Because that with the contact cleaner on the contacts there, could make a, a big difference. Let's uh, try it again. 
switch it on. As long as I get 4.9, yeah, there you go. Straight to 4.9 pretty much. I'm happy with that. That's about as good as that's gonna get, I think. So the last few things to this board, I think. I'm gonna stick some heat shrink, I'm following the Mind Flare Retro's uh, lead on this, actually. Some heat shrink over some of these camp, I think all of them, actually. I may as well do them all. There's only about, I don't know, 10 or 12. Um, because certainly, I was thinking about these filter ones. That's one of the filter caps there. If it did short, or you touched it, or whatever's underneath it caused some issue, you could kill the SID. So that is really a vulnerable, you know, a vulnerability, those two there. But then I started thinking, well, yeah, some of the others, you could, they could get bashed, they could get mangled. I mean, technically, you see, there's nothing here where this could short anywhere. I mean, it could do if it was pulled sideways totally. So, yeah, let's get some heat shrink. I'll just trim this down. Um, with each one here, I'll just get it roughly the size of the capacitor, like that. Slide it under the cap, like that, as far as it can go, really, I think. There we go, and we'll just shrink that, like that. Right, that's all the caps and the diode down here, all encapsulated with some heat shrink, just to protect them. You know, all the way down to the bottom legs, really. I think that's probably going to be... Uh, okay, you could fit that into a case and it would be alright as well. I think the next thing we do is just reflow that power switch there. Now we got the deoxy into those things earlier as you saw, you know, the contact cleaner and the voltage is really good, 4.9 something volts. Uh, but yeah, the solder points there just look awful. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here, get some thermal compound, I'll unscrew this, get some fresh thermal compound there, get some thermal compound under here, we're going to go and get a nut and a bolt. Even though this doesn't get that hot, I'm going to uh, secure it on there. Um, further forward, I'll probably see if I can get some caps and replace these three main caps here, but I won't do that within this video. Right, now the solder's gone, let's add some fresh solder, see what that looks like. Now yeah, that's way better. Way better. It wasn't just the flux, it had lead free solder on it, though. without a doubt. to those. Yeah, you can see how much better that is. Uh, and then I've got a new nut and bolt here. This uh, bolt is a bit long, it'll stick out of the bottom, so I'm going to screw it upwards from the underside. And there we go, that's bolted on, and uh, a bit of thermal compound under there as well. It goes without saying that these displays are going to put extra load onto these rails, just by a little bit, not a lot. Uh, yeah, it's not looking too bad now, actually. I'm quite pleased with it. So the picture is really nice and crisp and clear with that, uh, you know, re replacement for the modulator there. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's got a bit better after I set that jumper correctly. But what I would say is you still have the jail bar issues with these C64s. It's something Adrian Black pointed out on one of his videos, or a few of his videos actually. He was saying that sometimes you switch it off and on, and sometimes you get jail bars, sometimes you don't. And I've seen the exact same thing here. So like there, the jail bars, I can start, you won't be able to see them, but I can start to see a little bit, a little bit of lines, and I switch it off and on. It's, it's really hit and miss. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. More often than not, they are not very visible on this TV, but sometimes they're quite noticeable, actually. Yeah, they're there, they're noticeable now. I don't know that you can see that. If I just uh, hold you up like that, maybe you can see them. They might get lost in compression, I don't know. 
but that took me about four or five power on attempts there to get them to show and I can see them it's like a little bit lighter every character's width you know kind of thing uh, and I put that down to something around uh, the clock circuit something there is latching on an edge uh, subtly differently you know so like I don't know the obvious thing is the clock gen stuff you've got PLL stuff around there haven't you I think so something somewhere is a little bit variable in its timing you know depending on you know what happens when it powers on uh, does so, you know is something latching on an edge just a tiny little bit earlier or later than usual that, that's what the issue is there definitely I'm not sure what's causing that variation it may be you know from experience thinking about this when I've tested it before it may be that when it's a nice long power off you, you switch it on then you never get jail bars but if you switch it off and on you always at some point probably do see like that just power cycle there with a long power off I don't see them at all now but that's going to be nothing to do with this and the video is better it's more likely to be something here that nobody's worked out yet something to do with this or something to do with the way the Vic um, you know does the the clock stuff there because it produces the clock for the CPU doesn't it so I did a little bit more cleaning up of the board but you know there are some marks and things in here that just won't come off uh, yeah it's come out pretty well it's uh, it did take an incredible amount of time don't underestimate how hard these ZIF sockets are to get into the holes the whole thing about using the dowel there it's pretty essential I'd be amazed if the other guys who've done this have just been able to just desolder and then get them to go on now there could be variations in these ZIF sockets maybe the really good brand ones uh, don't have you know quite as thick pins as these I don't know but I mean if I just uh, show you this a little bit closer you can see that all different manufacturers there's a pattern number on there can you see that I suspect another company's patented this and they're just copying the pattern number or something or they've I don't know tweaked it but you see that says text TQOL not tool that one there says text doll <laughs> which is interesting that says text tool text tool text tool that one says text call <laughs> it's amazing how many different clones of these there are text doll text doll text doll uh t oh these are tfx doll there's not even an e it's t tfx oh no that's just tfx yeah that's just tfx t doll so i don't know there's lots of uh you know clones of these um yeah and you can see there's a subtle shade of uh, different blue that's like a lighter blue than this blue and that's a different one to that blue but anyway it came out really well so you could see i did some uh, modifications bent that there so that well you can still plug stuff in there technically it's still a little bit long this one down here what i did with this one is i pulled the little cap off as you saw then i bent it out but then when i, I drilled a hole right through the end of that little uh, nub in there that goes on the end and slid it all the way down so it does actually fit of course it does mean that when you want to use it you've got to you know just get a screwdriver in there like that to lift it yeah you can put it back down using your finger like that so yeah those are all things i think i just nearly pulled the blob off the end there i'm not sure but yeah those are all things to think about you could fit the four for the ram here so you've got eight in total but you may want these bars to go the other way but then if you were to fit this in a case you'd have a problem fitting it so i think just being able to test four ram like that at the time is sufficient for me it's uh, uh you know and the best i could do really and it's the same with that socket there i've got a dual uh, wipe socket there so that's fine I may take this off at some point and put a dual wipe socket there for that and of course I could go further I could now you know we've got one or two things socketed on here as well you know normal sockets I could uh, socket these things up as well but at this point in time I don't see any point in doing that the voltage displays yeah some people are going to be crying the fact that I drilled some little holes through the uh, you know the ground areas here to accommodate that but it means they're kind of permanent they're in place i don't need to worry about them uh you know and i just uh soldered uh you know this one up here to the main five volt rail uh, tapped off here five volts there ground there there's a trace there for the five volts that goes to the vic you know it's the five volt regulator over here for that uh, and obviously a nearby ground to just scratch the solder mask and there might have been a via that i sold there i'm not sure and then obviously the 12 volts for the vic is just down here on the output of this regular so yeah the solder points could be a bit cleaner and tidier there um there are some marks and things that haven't come off this but this board runs 
perfectly and I think everything is good there solder points are good everything underneath is protected this is these resistors I haven't got heat shrink around these resistors but yeah they can't really show it would need a pretty significant impact to knock one of these out of the way to cause a short somewhere so it was a very long-winded video I'm sorry but uh, yeah hopefully you found something interesting there maybe uh, the stuff with this or maybe adding some voltage things or maybe even just cleaning up the things here to get a better 5 volt level but I've shown that sort of stuff before and of course the cartridge slot came out a, a lot better as well and I did get some uh, deoxit I did get some deoxit in there you can see they look a bit weathered on the ends these yeah so I did clean the inside of that and it's, uh, it's nice and reliable now so I do hope you found the video interesting I'll catch you in the next video